Every day, over two million New Zealanders go to work. But there are people with disabilities ready to work who just aren't getting a fair go in the job market. People see the disability and they don't see the person. And more and more as New Zealanders, we know that there's probably 660,000 New Zealanders with disabilities. We have to change our attitudes. We have to build a much more inclusive society so that everybody knows that they've got a place here. Danny McBride was working in forestry when a tree fell on him, crushing his back. It's a touch ironic, but he's now back in the forest as a safety officer. I was just about finished my first tank of gas and had a look at my saw, got enough for one more and, and sort of started walking over to the next tree. There was a, a rotten tree standing probably six or eight metres behind the line of trees where I was working and the vibration of the trees that I was falling caused it to, to, to tip over. It hit me from the side, knocked me over, and as I was sort of going, falling down to my knees, I could hear my back breaking. My boss had said straight away that they'll, like, you know, after I'd had the operation and that, that they'll always, I'll have a job for you and you don't have to worry about that side of things. His deep knowledge of forestry was an asset. It's rewarding, I think. Just making sure that, or well, trying to make, put the systems and, and everything in place so that they get home safe and sound each and every day. Any hits or anything? We haven't uh, had any for ages. Uh, we had one this morning, just a bit of a slip, and nicked his boot. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was yeah. ants. The forest isn't the easiest place for a wheelchair user, but it doesn't impact on his ability to do the job. I love the industry, so it was important for me to be able to continue doing it. Like, I, I could have gone in, into other industry, but it is something that I love, so, it, it, yeah, it was pleasing and rewarding to get back into it. Hey, Charlie. How's it been? How's it watching, kids? Yeah, no, good. <laughs> For the past seven years, Vanessa McGoldrick's been walking these stairs to her office as a legal executive. Today, she's a fully qualified lawyer. She always knew she had the smarts to be a lawyer, but she needed the support from her employer. Some places that you work for will always define you as only being capable of so much. And one of the really positive things about Henderson Reeves is they have allowed me to upskill myself. I think the motivating factor for me is I've been a legal exec for 22 years now. So I've been doing the practical side of law for a long time. And it's really frustrating for me to go into a client interview and then have to say, call in one of the senior solicitors to swear the affidavit. I've prepared the affidavit. I know what's in it. I know how to swear an affidavit. I'm just not, by law, allowed to do so. Studying full time and working requires discipline. With two school-aged daughters, Vanessa needs to be efficient. She's up at 4 a.m. to study. Just when I started here, one of the things that affected me was working shorter hours, partly due to my disability, but also partly due to the fact that I had children. And one of the brilliant conversations I had with Stuart Henderson was along the lines of, would I like to work between sort of nine and three? And he said, Vanessa, we get far more value out of the employees who work those shorter hours, because let's face it, the first half an hour, everybody else is making a cup of tea and settling in. And he said, when people come in and walk sh work shorter hours, they're much more focused. Henderson Reeves is one of the few law firms in Whangarei that is actually accessible for disabled people. So that was a big factor in my deciding to work for this law firm. It's close to the courthouse, and I was always conscious that if I needed to do any interactions with there, it needed to be within walking distance for me. And, you know, this firm has gone out of its way. They've got an accessible entranceway, um, which allows me to go up on the stair lift on days where I'm struggling. And um, they also put in an accessible toilet, which meant that this firm, for clients and staff, is now fully accessible. It's sort of common knowledge within the community and within the firm that people with disabilities come in all the time and it's, they'll be for Vanessa, they don't even have to ask for me by name, which is, you know, it's great. Despite talking about having an ordinary life, despite taking themselves off to university and getting degrees, um, they're still unable 
to get work at the same rate as other people. So it's, it's very unbalanced and unfair. Teagle Head Office, Newmarket. At the core of the analytics team, Raj Swamy, an intelligent and highly skilled businessman. I'm the National Material Demands Planner here at Teagle. So my main role is forecasting the packages and ingredients required for our products at all the sites. My background, I've got Masters in International Business. Four years ago, Raj completely lost his confidence. And I was wondering, what's going on? Why are they saying my career goal's not hot enough? If I want to add value and build up more of my skills, I can add value um, well to companies. And that's when it was revealed that they'll be staring at my hand and things like that. When Raj graduated at the top of his class, his tutors told him getting a job in his chosen field would be easy. But employers just didn't consider him. That's when he met John Harlan, who runs a recruitment agency. John had a recruiting position to fill. Raj responded to the ad and impressed him. Raj has climbed the ladder. All he needed was a few employers to look past his disability. The lesson in Raj's experience is to believe in your skills and be persistent. All of us want to believe that we have a contribution to make to this country and to our own future and to the future of others. And to be able to do that, we have to be valued in the same way as everybody. We've got to learn that people with a disability want to have a normal everyday life, the same as you and me, and that's what we should be. Uh, in, encouraging, not only encouraging, but we should be enabling people to be able to participate fully. It's my workplace. I work at the post shop. I work at the co shop. I work hello, everyone. Hey. Thomas Sadgrove is a fully paid value team member at Bunnings Whangarei. Hello, mate. Hello. The Whangarei clientele know Thomas. He has a friendly way with people. Hi. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Good. All that rust? No. Yeah. No? No. No problem at all? No. Yeah. I might get that then. Thanks for your help. No. OK. If we set him to task, as long as it's something he can do repetitively, he's away. He'll do it every single day. Oh. I think initially we try to change him up too much and give him variety. Uh, until we found out that's not what he needed. He needed a bit of uh, repetitive stuff, and now he's just walks in and knows his job. Job well done. We're currently in the parts department at Fairview Motors out at 473 Tirapa Strait. Just grabbing a piece of blue paper and then I grab my silver box, as I call it. My job out here in this parts department is to get the orders that come off the printer, which you saw up front, and more or less just grab whatever parts come through and take them down to the panel or mechanics area. Ben's intellectual disability is a result of contracting meningitis when he was young. Yeah, in some way, everyone helps me. Like, even some of the salesmen. I do have my learners, and they, were, they played a big role in getting me my learners, which I did pass. Nope, nothing. I feel really ashamed to think that uh, we can't see beyond um, what it is that's affecting a person. And even if we can, why wouldn't we give it a go? My name is Jared Seymour, this is my dog Samson, and my office is upstairs. I graduated from Unitech where I studied to be a draftsman. Simpson, up you get. Jared has cerebral palsy and Good epilepsy. Dress. He worried employers would dismiss him before meeting him because of his disabilities. Come, Sam's. Let's go. 
Well, when I met Jared, I was, I guess I was slightly nervous. I mean, the whole business of cerebral palsy is always, um, I guess it's frightened me really because it's such a visible disability. Jared was introduced to Pip through a mentoring scheme. Often all anyone needs is that first break. Four years later, and he's still doing what he loves. How's it going? It's showing the whole entire building. So the, the, don't they have more than one uh, wall one? Not for the outside ones. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's what you're doing. Because when you... Yeah, what happens when you get inside? Inside. Everybody's disability is different, so he's learning about my disability as he goes along. Let's go. You know, I haven't met an employer who has taken on a person with a disability who hasn't had the value of that person, absolutely. At Guild Trap Prestige, five members of the team are deaf. Each is confident of his skills and knows that their work ethic spreads a positive vibe to everyone else. My job here is um, a full groomer, so I um, groom a range of cars. Um, like some people may purchase a vehicle um, and then they um, give me the vehicle to polish, um, do the windows, do everything to a really high standard and then we um, will give that back to the customer. I love working here because I love grooming those quite high-end vehicles, so that's why I like working here. I'm also a car enthusiast in my spare time, so I love just making sure everything looks perfect. The message for other employees, be confident. Show those potential bosses what you're worth. Working here, you have to work in a safe way. You have to work really hard. You have to make sure you do a really thorough job. My favourite thing is to um, focus on the work. Um, like, we don't have much sort of, you know, talking. We're more um, focused, and I like to keep my mind um, on that process. You know, I just like everything, really. A lot of the time we do um, sort of tease each other. Like, a deaf staff member might be, like, for example, vacuuming inside the vehicle. The deaf or hearing people will walk around to the back of them and switch off the vacuum cleaner and then run away. And the deaf person doesn't realise the vacuum cleaner's being turned off. And they're thinking, hang on, why is nothing being cleaned? All employers should be thinking really carefully when they're looking at their workforce about how they can, in fact, create opportunities for people who have a disability of whatever kind to be able to participate. That's what this country is about. This country is about giving people a fair go. Emma Halverson is 19 years old and has learning delays attributed to fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. She wasn't sure she'd get a job. That all changed when project manager Anna Marie Jamison had an epiphany. Emma is an administrative assistant at Fairfax Media, a role that comes with responsibilities. Well, this job is I have to put the newspapers where they're supposed to go because so people can read them and do, like, read what they've already written for the article. And I like reading some of them because some of the articles are really interesting. It's ripping articles out of magazines so the researchers can look through and say, oh, Annabelle, you know, we want to interview her, but we don't want to ask the same questions that this magazine has, you know, said. So I'm helping them with the research. She feels this job is more satisfying than her other prospects. Pushing trolleys are like, you know, came out or pack and save or, you know, one of the grocery stores. We've been at check -out. I'm not very good at math, so that wouldn't have been very good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad I've got the job I have. You happy with everything? Yes. Brilliant, and there's only one meeting room that we've got to sort out, so that's great. Yes. Alrighty. Thank you. See ya.
I feel very happy <laughs> that I'm actually getting out there and doing something. Because some of my friends are just, you know, at MIT or at home, and I'm like, oh, isn't it boring? <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm trying. I'm like, yes, it's very hard. <laughs>